This is the You Winning Life Podcast, your number one source for mastering a positive existence. Each episode, we'll be interviewing exceptional people, giving you empowering insights, and guiding you to extraordinary outcomes. Learn from specialists in the worlds of integrative and natural wellness, spirituality, psychology, and entrepreneurship. So you too can be winning life. Now, here's your host, licensed marriage and family therapist, certified neuro-emotional technique practitioner and certified entrepreneur coach, Jason Wasser. Welcome back everybody to the You Winning Life podcast. Today's guest is a new friend of mine, Jared Yellen, who is the ultimate entrepreneur. And if you're a professional who's struggling with your marketing, then he has the solutions to solve pretty much all of your challenges with the click of a few buttons. He founded Sinduit from a two-bedroom apartment and is dedicated to living a healthy lifestyle and helping one million change-making entrepreneurs create freedom for one billion people around the world. Jared, welcome to hanging out with us. Hey, man, thank you. What, a, what an honor. I feel, I feel like I've known you for like years, right? I feel like it's like those kindred spirits, like we were meant to connect, and now that we have, it's like, it's been like decades, even though it, it hasn't. And I'm excited to speak with your community. I'm an open book. I want you to push me way beyond the limits, and uh, let's create some value for everybody. Awesome. Well, thank you first for that incredible compliment. I definitely feel the same way. And I'm so glad we're partnering up on this and some other things that hopefully we'll be able to talk about in the future more with everybody out there. So the first thing off the bat that I want to push you with then is you have this big, massive, bold mission statement. One million change making entrepreneurs creating freedom for 1 billion people around the world. And people have mission statements and they talk about this large number, but why so big and why so bold for you? Yeah, well, it, it, it's it's always been what I've stood for. Um, I, I've always stood to support kind of the underdog in the battle, um, like the, like the the David versus the Goliath. And it's interesting, like the evolution of Sinduit didn't start there. Um, the first two years of Sinduit, we were actually a marketing agency um, for small to mid sized businesses, kind of like the top one percent of every industry, from health to real estate, to finance, to speakers, to authors, kind of like the who's who, like major best-selling authors would hire us to do their book launches and do their online product launches and build out learning management platforms. And the company within two years was extremely successful. But for me, it was so unfulfilling because I was helping uber successful people become more successful. And I didn't feel like we were changing the world. We had, we had hundreds of clients, but from the outside looking in, Jason, I mean, this, this was it. I mean, this was a really successful company. We had a huge office, we had a big team, extremely cash flow positive, didn't raise $1. So I mean, it was like the, the true entrepreneurial success story. And then in 2012, I had this epiphany. It was, it was actually on Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving in the States. And I was just like sitting there and I was reflecting because like gratitude, that's my jam. And Thanksgiving is like my most important day of the year. Um, and I was thinking to myself, I'm really proud of what we've done as a company, but I also feel like I'm about to sabotage it. Like it's somewhat unfulfilling for me. I don't feel like it's making the type of impact that I want to make as an entrepreneur. And I have this, this really good friend of mine. His name is John Butcher. He's the founder of, of Lifebook, which I consider to be the number one personal development program in the world. He's also the founder of about a dozen other companies, extremely successful, impactful serial entrepreneur. And when I was in my 20s, he said something to me, which was, you need to use this time in your life really responsibly. Because if you do, you can make seismic impact in your life. Like there's no better time than when you're in your 20s, early 30s to like really go all in. You can make, kind of take extra risk. Like you don't have that kind of responsibility yet. And he said to me, and the reason I'm saying this to you is I feel like you're scratching the surface by going all in on the agency. And I think you should really change the way that you think about an agency. So that always like rung in my mind. So it's Black Friday and I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to sabotage this. Like, I know I am. Like, it's a really good thing, but it's not epic. And I want to do what we're doing with a few hundred businesses with a million. And that concept just, I mean, it lit me on fire, Jason. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I'm like, can you imagine like what the world would look like if we were doing what we were doing with a few hundred really great entrepreneurs, but doing it with a million change maker entrepreneurs, not any business owner, like people that see the world for what it is in their domain, whether it's health or real estate or finance or veterinary work or travel, and they're committed to making it better. They're committed to making a really big difference. And the only way that I could conceptualize doing anything with a million people 
um, was to build a platform, build a marketing platform. And I had this one token engineer on my team in 2012, who's our CTO today. And I pitched him on that vision. And I said, I want to build the simplest marketing platform in the world. I don't want complex. I want really straightforward. And then I want to populate the platform with all of the content that a business or an industry would need. And I want to do this for 1 million entrepreneurs. Can you do it? And the rest is history because on engineers say yes to everything. So he's like, of course I can do it. And we went through this journey to do it, but that's where the mission is derived from to unite 1 million change maker entrepreneurs across all different industries so that together we can create freedom for ourselves and then also share that freedom with collectively 1 billion people from around the world. Incredible. So what happened from there? Once you made that switch in your mind, you, you took that big, big leap. What happened next for you? You know what it is? I, I talk to, to young entrepreneurs often, and I know there's lots that uh, tune into your podcast. And, and I tell them, and this is not even for young, this is for any entrepreneur, any small business owner. If there's something inside of you that feels that what you're doing is good, but not epic, risk good for epic. And it's a really hard thing because sometimes things are good. Like they're good, you're, you're going through the motions of life. But if there's something inside of you that's like, there has to be more, more impact, more change, there's something inside of you, risk good for epic. So for me, that's where I was at. We had a really, really good thing. And probably for most people's standards, a great thing going, but it just wasn't epic. It wasn't seismic. It wasn't making that massive difference. So when I asked this one token engineer, can we do it? His response was, we can, but there's three things I need from you. And I literally was like eyeball to eyeball with him. Um, And I'm like, we're deciding right now. So what do you need from me? And he said, the first thing is you have to promise not to distract me with any other projects for the next 365 days. I said, deal. You got it. This is, this is your only focus. I promise. He said, two, I absolutely can't do this alone. Um, I have to have a team. I said, whatever you need, let's start with contractors. It's just faster to hire contractors. And he goes, cool. And he goes, the third thing you're not going to like. And I said, we're making a decision right now. So what is that thing? And he goes, we have to raise at least $3 million because it's just, it's just too much of a risk to, to build a platform like this. And I said, no deal. Uh, it's too soon. I'm not diluting this. It's way too premature. I'll fund it through the agency. Now, looking back, that makes no sense like at all. It's almost like an immature decision. But at the time, it made all the sense in the world. And I just went all in so hard. There was no plan B. Like It had to work. And, and it did. So about a year later, we had the first version of our software done. Um, it was ready to go live. We had to pick one industry to start with. So we chose chiropractic for my passion for chiropractors. And I'm sure there's chiropractors that are going to tune in here. So you possibly know that because we've been doing this within chiropractic for years. And we launched the first done for you marketing platform, the official marketing platform for chiropractors 2014. And we had about a thousand chiropractors join us in four months because we really delivered exactly what the profession needed. Um, and the rest is history. We ended up, that proved out our concept. It bad validated it. Um, for me, that's all that I needed to see was there was a real need for a solution like this. We then doubled down. We, we got rid of contractors and just had employees on the development side. Um, we re-engineered the software uh, starting in 2015 through a little bit of 2016 just to make it more affordable, more flexible. And we've launched this version of our platform a little over three years ago. And to date, we have close to 36,000, probably over 36,000 individual change maker entrepreneurs working on our platform across 30 industries. So there was other challenges throughout, which I'm happy to dig into. The key with it though, is that when I recognized that good wasn't good enough, and I had to build Epic, and this is an ego thing. This had nothing to do with finances. It had to do with impact. Like if we're here, let's just pretend we have one life, right? Let's just pretend, regardless of your beliefs, let's just say you have one life, you can choose good or you can choose Epic. And there's, no, there's nothing that, like, I'm not judging you based on your decision. But if inside there's something as epic or something seismic, you have to risk good for epic and then just go all in because you can do it. And that was just my story. And that's how we've been able to accomplish it. So let's say someone out there is listening to this ridiculous story and, and, and the fear factor is creeping up on them. What's the first thing they can say to themselves after just hearing verbatim what you just said? What's the next thing that they need to do for themselves? If they feel aligned with that, if they feel like their authenticity is connected to doing something not just good and great, but really epic, what's the next thing they need to be saying to themselves and what's the next thing they need to be doing for themselves? Yeah, it's a great question. It's actually not something you say to yourself. Like for me, I say it to the world. So I need the world to hold me accountable. 
And my team, it drives my team crazy because like I say things way too prematurely and I do it because we have no choice but to deliver. So that's literally what I did. I went out to every one of my high levered personal contacts. I knew we were going to start in chiropractic. So in the chiropractic profession, people that I knew for years that really respected me. And I said, here's what I'm going to do. 2014, we're going to launch the official marketing platform for chiropractors. It's going to be a done-for-you solution with every strategy the chiropractor has ever dreamed of, and the practice can press one button to replicate, automate, and personalize any of these strategies. And I'm sharing this with you because when we launch, I want your support because this is going to mobilize the truth around chiropractic care. And every one of these leaders said, Jared, when you're ready, I'm ready to help share it. And I mean, that just, I mean, it, it put my back against the wall. I had no choice but to deliver. And that's just how I do it. When I have that feeling, I've had that feeling since then too, where I'm like, we need to go bigger. We need to, and I'll, I'll talk about what that looks like. Um, but it's always me telling people, so I have no choice but to deliver. And that might scare you right now. You might be at a point where you're like, wait a second, Jared, like I'm willing to accept that good is not good enough. And I'm willing to go for Epic, but I'm not willing to tell anybody yet. Once you have the courage to tell people is when you have the courage to execute. And that's just my personal experience. And you might say, no, I can't. I need to keep it quiet until it's more real. If that works for you, then no judgment here. But what worked for me was actually talking about it very, very prematurely. And then my team's like, what are you doing? I'm like, yeah, we have to do it now. Like, we have no choice but to do it now. And that's how we've done it. I think two of the biggest takeaways that I want people to hear from what you just said is one is leverage. Is that you have to create your team. They don't have to be working for you. Like you said, you had outside contractors and that everything you can accomplish, you can accomplish with the help of someone else. And I think that's something that's been lost for solopreneurs, especially people in the healthcare profession. Um, but I see it everywhere, right? You see it, I'm sure, in the financial services or real estate or whatever it is that they may, their company may have something offering them, but they're not trained on it. They're not trained on the marketing. They're not trained on systems. They're not trained and they don't leverage that. And I think one of the beautiful things that your company, Synduit, is doing is leveraging a whole marketing platform. And we're going to get more into what Synduit actually does in a moment. But the second thing is the level of accountability, putting what you said out there to the world and then having to stand up in it is, is a huge deal. So I, I find that all the time that when people just keep it internally, especially right coming from a therapy perspective versus sharing it with someone else, whether it is their therapist or their coach uh, or their family, that the success happens at a, less, uh, a lesser result over that time. So I know you're bold as I've gotten to know you is, right, you created an accountability group for, for the people who are using the program for webinars to put it out there 12 times a year and then for everybody to show up and support each other in that. And we're probably going to see radical more results with that. So if two, the people out there can just hear those two points alone of what we just talked about, the whole episode is worth it, right? Leverage, who's in your life? Who do you need to bring in your life to help you get it accomplished? And two, how do you hold yourself accountable and who needs to hold you accountable for that? And the other part is don't be a change talker, be a change maker, right? So yeah, having that internal dialogue is great. Once you communicate it to others is when it starts to become more real but then transition from talking to making. And it's all about execution, like monomaniacal focus. I don't believe in having a plan B. And that's something that freaks people out. They're like, no, I need some safety net. I just don't believe in that. I believe in having one plan because plan B distracts from plan A and just going all in on that plan. Now that doesn't mean if right now, like you have like a side hustle trying to build something that's important to you and you have a career that's funding your life that you're not all in. You're still all in. Like, it's just once you officially step into all in because your side hustle becomes your main thing, mm -hmm. you're just all in. Like you don't have like this backup plan. Well, now if my side hustle doesn't work, I could always do this. No, make it work. Like go all in. And then like Jason just said, it's all about leverage. It's all about relationships. The thing that I'm fanatical about is leveraging relationships because relationships, they cut time down. Like when you can have a relationship with somebody who has maybe a relationship with an industry for 10 years, you can build a bond with that person. That means that you have a relationship with an industry for 10 years, like overnight, like whereas it takes time for relationships to mature. And we'll talk more about that because there was another key distinction that I had after years of, of scaling Sindhu at the way that we have about how to leverage relationships to reach the next level. So let's just jump right into that right now before we lose the momentum on that. So let's talk about that. Yeah, so I... I when we were doing this with just chiropractors, there was this really beautiful thing about Sinuit, which was we had a mission 
that the entire profession was able to attach to. And that mission was to support 10,000 chiropractors so that together we were able to make chiropractic the first stop instead of the last stop on someone's health journey. And the cool thing about that mission is that whether you were using our software at that time, this is in 2014, or not, you would stand behind that mission. I mean, the entire profession stood behind that mission. So we were at every table. We were at political discussions. We were invited to every single event, conventions. I, as a, as a non-VC, was invited to speak at every chiropractic college. Like, that doesn't happen. Like, that just that doesn't exist. Like, especially when I was like 27 years old. Like, it, it just doesn't make sense. Like, like, who am I to be there? But it's because the mission was just so real to that industry and authentic too. I mean, that's what we stood to do. As we started to expand and then we had this like slight pivot where we became sinuate for every single industry, what got a little diluted was the mission specific to the industry. And over the past year, I've been really thinking about that, like how powerful it is to create a mission that an industry can identify with. And we started to go down the path of private labeling our software, where we create versions of our software and we go industry by industry. And when we do that, we actually create partnerships with the right people within those industries to cut that time down. So for example, we have a private label in the dental profession and our partner has been in dentistry for 30 years. It would take us 30 years to build the kind of relationships that he already has today. So because of the partnerships we've been able to establish with him, we now have 30 year relationships in like one day. And we're able to do things in this profession that just weren't possible before. But this is another great example. We have a very, very good thing going with Sindhu now, like close to Epic, right? Like 36,000 active users in three years. Most would say it's Epic. And I'm saying we're scratching the surface because what I want to do is have 150 different versions of Sinduit that are industry specific. The plumber solution, the landscaper solution, the dental solution, the chiropractic solution. So it's actually getting back to where we started this conversation, which is building an industry-based platform that has a mission for that industry, partners within that industry, and we're focused on doing one thing, which is mobilizing that specific industry to share and spread their message. And that was a key distinction for me because I said, okay, we've built this great thing, but we're not just a generic software. We're a content deployment system. And as a content deployment system, we need to have a face and a brand that speaks to every single industry. And that was the next pivot. And this is my fanatical nature of I'm not okay with even very good or close to Epic. I want seismic. And to serve a million, it's going to be through 150 versions of our platform across every single industry where we create the official marketing platform for Blank. So right now we have 12 private labels that are in circulation. My goal is within the next 365 days, Sinduit is not a brand that offers a marketing software. And instead, every industry has their own marketing platform with their own content and their own mission and their own relevant training. We have partners that are able to then play their part. And then what Sinduit becomes is an educational platform for small business owners when it comes to marketing and sales, a safe place to go to learn the skills to be successful inside of our portfolio companies. Because that's one of the things that I'm seeing is many small business owners, they are more overwhelmed than ever and not just because of tech, because they don't know certain skills and they don't know where to go to get that information because most of the training is so over your head because you're at square one. Like you're, you're just getting going with this and they're not connecting with you where you're at. Whereas we've always worked with business owners like that and we're really good at getting here and helping you slowly get to where you need to get to. So that's the next phase. I've, seen, I've never even talked about this publicly. Like, it's literally the first time, other than just with my team. But that's the next phase. 365 days from now, Sinduit does not offer marketing software. It offers marketing and sales training. And we have 150, well, not in a year, but we'll have at least 25 to 30 private labels in every major industry that will serve your specific needs. What's so powerful about what you just said reminds me of exactly how a McDonald's or a Burger King works is that there's a system in play and that anybody can plug into that system, whether you're a 15 year old kid or a 50 year old. 100%. And it's just that's, wash that's, and repeat. I'm, I'm all about anything that requires you to do something twice. I'm about creating a system around. Um, so that's, that's, that's the nature of our platform. But like, think about that for yourself as a full-time entrepreneur or an aspiring entrepreneur right now that's listening to this podcast. The key is that what's going to hold you back 
is the fact that you're doing redundant work. So you're doing the same thing many, many times. It's about creating systems and workflows and delegation. And you can go and, and hire virtual assistants who are really inexpensive right now in other countries that are like amazing and you're giving them a gift, which is work and it's going to serve them and their family and it's going to serve you. It's going to give you time back to focus on higher leverage and higher producing activities. But it's really important that you're honest with yourself. Take an inventory. Like where are you spending your time as a side hustle or as a main hustle, as an entrepreneur, and then find ways to consistently fire yourself from the things that you're doing so that you can just continue to focus on high leverage, highest producing activities. So like for me, like the highest producing activities are I'm really good when it comes to building relationships with high leverage people within industries to build strategic alliances to launch private label software. Like I'm the best in the world at that, I would say. I'm not the best in the world at, at facilitating that from the creative standpoint, from the technology standpoint. So I have people on my team that become CEOs of those areas because that's their actual main thing. Like there's no one better in the world than them at those pieces. And that's how we built our company. Like we're not that large of a company to serve this many people and have 12 private labels already in circulation. Like that's a crazy concept for the size company we are. But when you hire people that can become the CEO of something, even as like a, a $7 an hour virtual assistant, they're the CEO of an area of your business because that might be where you're at. And you allow them to feel that way and you empower them to even make decisions like that so that you can focus on higher leverage. That's how you start to scale yourself. And it's so applicable to what has happened in my life over the last couple of years. Um, starting off as a therapist, it was right that one-to-one, one-to-two or one-to-a-family session. And then I started realizing that I can make it more efficient by um, when I, years ago, I was going through panic attacks and anxiety and I stumbled onto neuroemotional technique, NET, which you and I have talked about. And over the years of spending time in the NET community, it came out of chiropractic. And I found that even though I went to chiropractors over the years, but I never knew there was this whole other side of integrative and natural health care that was, um, that's based in the chiropractic world. And I started having massive chiropractic envy to the point where I actually applied to chiropractic school three years ago and got accepted to chiropractic school three years ago. And then I had this big, massive decision of, do I go back to school for three and a half years, move to Atlanta, Georgia, not work, take out $300,000 of student loans to just go back to being a technician and serving one-to-one just with another tool that I felt like I didn't have because I felt that I could do more as a healer or as a healthcare professional than I could just as a therapist. And the people who I talked to who gave me the best advice just said the following, just bring a chiropractor into your office. Oh yeah. <laughs> Save yourself the $350,000. Over the course of the, the, the lifetime of working with them, maybe you'll make the $350,000 from them instead, right? But it's really more about I'm missing a tool that I thought that I couldn't give to my clients. And then the identity of like, I can do more, I can do more is, well, then just bring someone else who can do more because they can see that client during the hour in my office across the hall. I can see my client for the hour. We're both helping more people. We're both making more money. We're both supporting ourselves. And that's a really powerful concept that I want people to connect with is that figure out what your talents and your traits are and then refer out, hire out, bring into your business, bring into your practice, all of that. So Sindu it right at this point. I just want people to understand what you're doing um, and what you offer because it's not just this marketing and education platform, but what does what what are the things out there that Sindu it replaces for professionals so they can really understand what you and your team have created? Yeah, so when we went down this path of building the simplest marketing platform in the world, we had this one like defining meeting as a team. Um, we all, at the time, we had a huge office right outside New York City. We've gone remote since then because my team wanted to be nomads. And I said, let's give it a shot. And we pulled it off. So it's been amazing. Um, we were physically in this office. We we're sitting down and we said, we have to really deliver on that. Like, I'm not just here to create like good marketing lingo, like simplest marketing software in the world. Like what does that actually mean? And there was three pillars that we had to address. That was what we came away from this meeting. First pillar was functionality. So one of the things that we learned was the everyday business owner, whether you're a chiropractor, a real estate professional, in finance, a veterinarian, a travel agent, you don't want to fiddle. You don't want to log into like six different software solutions to get the job done. You want one place to do everything. So we said, okay, what are the features that a business needs. So we built a full email marketing system. So that would replace the MailChimp, the Constant Contact, the Aweber. Like you wouldn't need that anymore. You do all of that directly inside 
of Synduit. We then said, okay, what about social media scheduling? That's really important. So we built a social media scheduling platform for Facebook, for Twitter, for Instagram, for LinkedIn. So you don't need Hootsuite or Buffer or any of the other social platforms out there. We then said text messaging is key. So we built an entire integrated texting platform for text message marketing, text blast, text reminders, et cetera. We then said event registration is so important. So we built an entire event registration system like an Eventbrite just built into our software for in-person experiences and virtual experiences as well, like webinars or online challenges. We then said list building is key. I mean, we're going to be serving people that don't have big lists. We have to support them with that. So we built an entire landing page platform for list building purposes or for consultations or whatever you would like to do with it. Autoresponders, contact management, you can organize your database. So that was the first pillar. We checked the box. All of the features are in our software. The second thing was content. So we had this thesis years ago, which was the everyday business does not want to have to produce all of their own content. They'll produce some of it and some want to produce none of it, but no one wants to produce all of it. So we said, let's just double down and give them everything they've ever dreamed of and more. And we did. Um, we have built a campaign library now of over 10,000 campaigns across all industries um, that we're supporting right now. So an individual user will see hundreds to maybe a thousand campaigns, depending on how many industries they identify with. But this content is literally everything. Workshops and webinars on every topic you can imagine within your industry, including the presentation and the script. So you know what to say and what to show during the workshop and webinar. Online challenges, focus and support groups, uh, newsletters, social media blitzes, list building campaigns, appreciation experiences, fundraisers, referral initiatives. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. We have just produced a library valued in the millions and millions of dollars. And we consistently add content every week. There are new campaigns going live all of which are crowdsourced. We go to our users, we say, what would you like us to build next? They tell us we build it for them and for the entire industry to benefit from as well. That was the next pillar. The third thing was data. One of the biggest issues I had as an agency is we used to tell our clients, oh, this is a proven strategy. And we weren't lying, like we kind of felt that it was proven, but it wasn't really proven because we may have deployed it one other time with one other agency client. I wanted to create predictability around marketing and we have done it. Every campaign in our software has been used either hundreds to thousands, some even tens of thousands of times. And as a result, we aggregate data, we look for trends, we find things that work, we double down on it, when we find things that don't, we fix them and then roll them out to all of our users. We've created predictability around marketing. So those are the three pillars, functionality, content, and data. So what Sendua becomes for you is the only marketing platform that you need for your business because it gives you the features you need, which you can use on your own. You can create your own content as well. It gives you a content library that, I mean, it's kind of just unmatched. Like there's, there's no other company that has content to this degree. Um, that's all research-based content. And then it also supplies you with data because we're collecting data and then applying it to the actual campaigns for you. It's so interesting because what's out there in the world, like you said, you just named five or six other companies that are doing just one of those verticals and you've put together all of these other things and about um, two months ago I was at um, podcast movement which is one of the largest podcast um, community conferences in the world and as you know I'm new to I just started about a few weeks before even that conference and I saw all these people talking about all these solutions but you have to go here for this and here for this and and I know when we met in person at business finishing school um, Rick Sapio's core values are simplicity probability and leverage and when you got up on the stage and you shared your presentation and how what, the, the, the philosophy you believe about what type of marketing you do, it's, it sank and it sat directly in that same value. And I think for me as a person who's running my own small business, I don't have the time to do this. And, and I want to make, I'd let people out there know that this is not a sales um, episode. Uh, I, although I did just sign up to you send it at that weekend, but I know for the last God knows how many years since I started my business, how many different things that I had to juggle as a solopreneur and the simplicity of the thing. And that's what attracted me to your program. Um, and I've heard about it for, for, for two years from other practitioners in the world. And I'm like, Oh, okay, whatever. It can't really be that good, you know? And, and, and then I 
saw what you were talking about when we met. And I'm like, okay, this was a no brainer for me. So I know like when we were talking about the fear factor a bit ago about taking that next step for, for people who are in the small businesses is that the investment is so worth it if you break it down to a monthly fee of what you're going to be doing anyway and your time and your leverage that it really becomes a negligible expense for your, for your business. And notice, let me share like why, like we did this, because I think the greatest ideas, actually I know the greatest ideas are like when an entrepreneur scratches their own itch. Um, and when I launched into it, it's now eight years. Um, I, two weeks before starting the company, I actually met the person that I'm now married to. Um, so some like free advice for everybody. Don't start a relationship in a company within two weeks. Like that's hard. Um, but I knew that she was the one and Sindhu was already in motion. So um, there was no choice, but to try to just figure that out. Um, and what I figured out was Sindhu. I mean, I scaled very fast, um, extremely fast. This wasn't like this, this slow climb. I really know how to sell. And at the time in the beginning, I was just selling myself as a copywriter and I really know how to write copy. So like, it was a very easy sale. I knew a lot of people that were like, sure, of course we'll hire you. That's like the greatest thing ever. Um, and then it turned into an agency. Um, but here's what happened in that first probably 16 to 18 months of the company, Cindy would exploded and the relationship plummeted because I didn't give it any time. In the new relationship, like we had excitement and love and we're deeply connected and I'll never forget it. Um, like 16 to 18 months in, and I don't even like talk about this that often, but I got into bed one night at like four o'clock in the morning, typical, like crazy entrepreneurial life, like 20 hour days. Like it was very intense. Um, and Lindsay poked me and she said, Jared, I want you to know you make me feel like I'm an inconvenience. And it was a really interesting feeling, Jason, because in that moment, I could have, I could have fought her on it. I could be like, what are you talking about? Like, you're not an inconvenience. Like I could have done that. Um, I could have cried and been like, oh no, like I can't believe I'm making you feel that way. And you know what I did? I smiled. And the reason I smiled was because she did what represented inconvenience in my life, but I didn't want her to. And that was a point of like demarcation for me. I realized that if I, my purpose of being an entrepreneur is to create freedom for myself and for my family and for my team and for everybody else that we touch. And I'm not even creating freedom for myself to be there for the person that I love most. And I literally said to myself that night, everything's about to change. And I woke up the next morning and I thought to myself, why is she an inconvenience? Like, why is this not working? And I realized we had no plan as a company. Mm -hmm. I mean, every day I would wake up, I'd go to the gym really early, I'd take a shower and any ideas that came to me in the shower, we deployed that day. That's not a plan. I mean, it drove my team a little bit crazy. It drove Lindsay really crazy because I had no time for her. And what I realized was we needed to build a 12 month marketing plan. So there was like a roadmap into the future that was visible for me, for my team, for Lindsay. So like when there was time that we had to double down, like everybody knew, and there was time that was a little bit more paced. We can have more balance in our lives. But I didn't know what the ingredients of a marketing plan were. And I started asking people that I knew, other successful entrepreneurs, like, what's your marketing plan? What's your marketing plan? And everybody said, we don't have one. And I'm like, what do you mean you don't have one? Like some of these companies were doing like a hundred million dollars or more in sales. Like one of them was doing almost a billion dollars in sales. And I'm really close with the founder. And like, they had no real marketing plan into the future. Like they had one for like 30 days, but not for 12 months. So I said, okay, I'm going to create a formula for our company called the annual marketing plan formula. And I literally locked myself in a room for a few hours every day for a couple of months. And I just was thinking about what does a marketing plan look like? What are the ingredients of a marketing plan? And I finally figured it out. And I was so excited and I laid it all out. And then I went to my team, I called this big team meeting. We were physically together in our office. And I said, we're now gonna implement this, go for it. And the team said, sure. And they went through it and they created this whole like scope of work just to create expectation for me because we were an agency at the time and that was like what we would do. And they said, yeah, it'll take us about 700 hours to implement this. And I'm like, 700 hours? this needs to be something that anyone can do. Like it can't just be like something that like, because we have the right resources, we can deploy this. Like we need to help like John Doe, the chiropractor or Mary, the health coach, or like Bob, the life coach who has no team. They need to be able to do this. And I said, we have to build a platform that allows businesses to take this formula and implement it in under 60 minutes for the entire year. And that was it. Like that was all that I could see when we were building the platform. I said, that's the outcome. We need to find a way to create a straight line for the person that's not technical, doesn't really know marketing, to have a 12 month content marketing plan filled with workshops and webinars and challenges and appreciation experiences and referral programs and newsletters. And they need to be able to implement in under 60 minutes for the whole year. And the reason that was so important to me 
was because as an entrepreneur, I exist to create freedom for myself and for my family and for my team and for our tribe so that everybody can do whatever they want, whenever they want, and as often as they want without ever saying, can I, and only saying, I can. And when you can take something that usually would take 700 hours and condense it to an hour for the whole year, it gives you 699 hours of freedom that you can then spend with your family, high producing business activities. You can learn new hobbies and skills. You can do more personal development. You can get to the gym. You can eat healthier. It just contributes to freedom. And that was it. That was my like monomaniacal focus was I can never allow the person I love most to feel like an inconvenience. I need to create something that allows her to feel like the most important thing in the world. And since then, we have two kids and we have it all. And I'm not saying that like an arrogant sense at all. I'm saying it as an example for all of you listening to this or watching this. You can have it all too. But it's so critical that you focus on high producing, high leverage activities. And if I had to guess, all of you out there who either do, are doing your main hustle or your side hustle, whatever that might be, I can almost guarantee you're not doing that because you want to write a newsletter on a monthly basis or because you want to create a PowerPoint presentation for your next workshop or because you want to design social media images. That's probably not the reason why you chose to become a change maker entrepreneur. So it's really important that you find a way to stay in your zone of genius because when you're there, nothing can stop you. And that's how you can start to make your seismic impact. So what I want people to really hear on top of everything you just said is that when you finally hear someone out there talking the way that you just heard him talk, is to never confuse, and I share this with my clients all the time when I get excited about what I'm sharing with them about NET and why I want them to try integrative nutrition and functional medicine and all the things that my practice or other practices have out there, is to never confuse passion and pushiness. And right now in these conversations, this is why I'm doing this podcast and why I'm having this conversation with you is, is this is, this is about our passions, right? We have shared mutual passions. That's what you and I have connected over. This is what we want to share to the people that are partnering with you at Sindu at me in my practice, me in this podcast is that for people out there who are hearing this is that if you can get to this level of passion about what you are doing, then you're going to start creating people around you and start attracting people around you that are so like-minded that you're going to build a community of powerful people and which goes back to your mission statement and my mission statements, right? Which is, which is about bringing health, hope and happiness to the world and you about inspiring 1 million change making entrepreneurs is that that passion that we talk about, the passion that we share will automatically attract those people and it will clear out the way for the people who are not attracted to that. And so we don't have to waste our time and energy and effort. The only reason you would suppress yourself is fear of judgment. That's it. As a change maker entrepreneur, the only reason you would hold back like the way that I'm using out, the way that Jason uses out is because you're like, oh, I don't want to be perceived as too salesy. Like I need to suppress my energy to make other people comfortable. And I live to make people uncomfortable so that they can grow and they can really dig into who they are and who they want to be. So like I've had many people be like, like tone it down, bro. I'm like, I'm going to amp it up. Cause like by turning you off, I'm going to turn thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people on. And that's what I stand to do, right? So for any of you out there that like hold back your passion, it's just like the judgment you feel that people are going to have of you. But that's your story, right? Like stop assuming they're going to feel a certain way and instead just know whether you're on a podcast, whether you're doing a webinar, whether you're talking to somebody one-on-one -on -one at a networking event. Know that when you finish that dialogue, there's nothing more you could have done. Like you just gave it, you gave it 110% of yourself. Nothing held back whatsoever. You oozed who you are and that allows you to feel complete in that experience. And it also allows you to make the greatest impact on the receiver of that experience, whether it's one person or many people or some combination of that, a few people or things like that. Absolutely. And I think the psychological insight that I'm having here is that the people who are out uncomfortable seeing other people do that, it's because it's an unowned part of themselves that they're not yet confident or secure about in themselves. So on one side, they might make, they, they might become a hater about that person. Oh, that person, he's over the top. He's super cocky. He's super passionate. And it comes across as cockiness to that person versus, wow. Where, where am I not about that in anything in my life? Where am I not taking ownership of the things that I, right? And I know you talked about this and I've talked about this, you know, and Patrick Gentempo talked about this is where are you not putting your flag in the ground and your line in the sand and then putting it out there? And I think that's where people need to hear, especially in the industries where 
it comes with you having, we all have to sell ourselves. Even though I'm a therapist, I still have to make the clothes when somebody calls me. It's not a given that just because they're calling me and they got my name from two of their friends that I'm actually going to close the deal and get them to come into the office. I have to clear the way and say, listen, I will only work with you if you're open to not just doing talk therapy, but doing the mind-body integrative work such as NET. And if you're not, I'm not the right therapist for you. Yeah. And know that it is like one of our like creeds for our company um, is care about everything and care about nothing. And, and what that means is like feedback as an example. Like we care about all feedback, but we don't care about any feedback at the same time. So let me give you a real like basic example of this. Um, I call our tribe rock stars and every now and then there's like one random person that will reply to one of our emails or texts and they'll be like, stop calling me a rock star, right? I could focus on that one person's feeling around that term or I can recognize that there's thousands of people who don't wake up every day feeling like a rock star, but because I tell them they are, it changes their psychology and now they feel like a rock star. And what most people do is they'll focus on that one naysayer who's like, don't call me a rock star. And instead of putting their energy into the thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of people that are turned on by that. So care about everything, yet care about nothing when you know that you're doing it for the right reason. I mean, that's the foundation of it. Like we know what we're doing is for the right reason. Absolutely. And there are plenty of naysayers that come in and like bark because dogs don't bark at parked cars. Like they bark and try to derail or distract We just double down because at the same time, we know that those three or five or 10 people that have something negative to say, there's 10,000 or 100,000 or a million or a billion people that are really fired up by what we have to say. And that's that whole concept, like lay your mark in the ground. This is what you stand for. And when you have that level of certainty around what you stand for, whatever that is for you, it is a magnet for the right people, for your life and for your business and for strategic relationships and creating synergies, but it's all based on deep, deep conviction, just knowing what you stand for. And I want to go back to that moment in, right when, when Lindsay poked you and this idea of creating this whole massive game plan and this, this, this annual plan is that this is exactly what I do with my clients in therapy. It's their marketing plan. So about a month ago, um, right before I met you a month and a half ago, um, I did a, a, a retreat for young professionals. And one of the classes I gave is what's your marketing brand? And everything was based around core values, defining your core values. And what are the core values of the person that you're interested in and attracting? And why aren't you getting who you say you want to get? And why aren't your relationships working out for you? But in that moment of when she poked you and said, I feel like a, right, a nuisance or I feel like a distraction you created, and this is what I want my clients to realize when it comes to their relationships specifically, and then the side trickle down, hopefully will be their, their businesses or their careers, is are you doing this in your personal life as well? Because you're married and you have a child now, right? So you had to do something differently, not just on the business side, but you had to do something different on the personal side. So, so what changed for you when it came to your relationship with her? And how did you put that effort? Because you right, you're, you have multiple people working for you. I know we, you have this remote work stuff, which is a really cool part of, your, of the philosophy of your company. What changed for you in that moment as, as a partner in this relationship to make sure that you both can create a game plan and a goal for you to get to where you are now? Yeah, so it's an excellent cliche, but it's, it's 100% based on values. So I just created a pyramid of the absolute most important things in my life. And as much as I love being an entrepreneur, there's nothing that I love more than my family. So my wife and my two kids, like that's my be all end all. So either Sinduit supports me in having the freedom to never miss anything with my family or Sinduit is not part of my existence. And it's that black or white for me. So I had to find a way to make myself as an entrepreneur turn into what I want my life to be versus extract from what I want my life to be. And it's just that, it was just that cut and dry. I mean, there was, there was no other option and I would have given it all up too. Like we had a really good thing going, but if it were to continue that way and I would have became one of those entrepreneurs that had a horrible relationship, had kids that didn't even know them, I would have just thrown the company away because I would have realized that just wasn't the right thing for me to do. I'm super talented. I can do anything with my time and I would have just built something different to allow me to have, the lifestyle that I want. And the other day I was in this, this big meeting and this, this, this group said to me, 
what's the end game for Synduit? And I said, there is none other than supporting a million entrepreneurs to create a billion, create freedom for a billion people. They're like, and they're like really, like, what's your end game? I said, there's none until Synduit starts to take away from what's most important to me. And if it doesn't take away and it continues to contribute to what's important to me, then this is a forever for me because it's, it's exciting. It's dynamic. We're constantly reinventing ourselves. We work with really cool people like you and tens of thousands of other really great change maker entrepreneurs. We're now private labeling the software and going into industries that we would never have been able to go into before if we didn't have private label versions of our software. We have amazing partners in every industry that we're working within. And it's contributing to me as a father to my two rock star kids and to me as a husband, to my wife and to my health. So that's just how I make decisions. It's super cliche, but you get really clear on your values and then you never negotiate with yourself or with your values because those are the things that are the most important to you. And then you allow yourself as an entrepreneur to create more freedom for you to really live within your values. It's funny that you say it's super cliche and I would call it super fundamental. And my, my, my friends who know me uh, or the people who are working with me, let's just keep it in that, my, my therapy and my coaching clients, they're going to know there's two things that I'm going to talk to them about. One is NET and integrative health and natural health. And the other thing is core values. And if I can't, if I don't know what your core values are, because you don't know what your core values are, then I can't help you. So the first things that I do with all my clients is I give them that worksheet from Business Finishing School's first module and just say, okay, what are your individual core values? What are the things that you feel that if you did these things, wash and repeat over and over again as the lens you're going to see the world to make it really binary? Does it align with my core values and therefore I can do it? Or does it not align with my core values? It doesn't. And if they're in a relationship, sit down together and write down your relationship core values about what you two want to make as a couple or as a family, that anything that comes up, whether it's friends, activities, sports, birthday parties, vacations, what aligns with that and what not. So I'll amplify saying how cl that it's cliche, but actually how fundamental it is. And I really do want to challenge people out there and I'll have the link in the show notes for this to download the, the, the core value worksheet. And you can DM me on Instagram and I will if you have any questions, I will walk you through it. So people out there who are listening to this, feel free to take advantage of that resource. And, and I know you were just talking about self-care and I want you to repeat that statement you said one more time about, about if Sinduit, Sinduit has to work for me, I'm not working for Sinduit. The way you said it, I want you to say that kind of, if you can remember how you said it, but can you say that one more time? Yes, yeah, Sinduit has to contribute to my what I want to create for my life, not detract from what I want for my life. And I really, I see like, I have tons of friends that are in the startup world, successful entrepreneurs, and some of them have that. Like some of them have a company that allows them to have the lifestyle that they want, but most of them don't. And they miss out, like from my perspective, like key things. And maybe from their perspective, they don't care. Um, but I don't see how anyone can be in a relationship and have kids and not care about missing things with their children and, and their significant other. I just don't, I can't even fathom that. And that might be because that's all that I know and that's all that I think about. But Sinduit has to contribute to that and not detract from it. And if at any point in the future it starts to detract, that's when I start creating my end game strategy. Um, but for right now, I mean, it contributes. And I mean, dude, I miss nothing. Like literally nothing. Like my daughter had this thing at her school for like 30 minutes. And like, I, who would like... So, I mean, like derail their whole day. For, like, and I did. Like I was there like with every other like stay at home parent. And it was like me. And they're like, oh, we didn't know that you were a stay at home parent. I'm like, well, I am a parent. Oh, and I'm also an entrepreneur. Um, and I just don't miss anything. Like nothing. When I travel and I'm, I'm selective on when I go, my whole family comes with me. Like business finishing school, like I spoke there, like whole family's coming with me. To me, those, that's my highest value. I'm not passing judgment for others. That's, that, that's not the case. But what I am saying is clearly to find your values. Like you said, like, this is like fundamental. This is like foundational in your existence. And then you as an entrepreneur, that should contribute to the fact that you can live out your values, not detract from it. And it really requires like open and honest dialogue with yourself. And then not just having a dialogue, making change. And that means either changing the strategy, delegating, bringing on more people, creating more leverage, changing your entire business, or just getting rid of it and then starting something over so that it aligns with your values because values are everything if you want to live a life where you have it all. 
Right. And I want people really out there to hear this, that this is completely doable. You're not making this up. And, and people out there who are either running a business, running a company, uh, even working for someone else, this is doable. But the key components are the leverage, the mapping it out, kind of really thinking out not long term, but even now it's even go longer than one, you know, one year, two years, three years, five years. But what's the end result? Like you said, like once it starts taking away from my personal life, then it's going to be, it's obviously not the right path for you. And, and I know one of the things that you are massive about is your self-care and your health. And I know we briefly talked about when we first met about biohacking. So I just love to spend a few minutes on that because um, I know we only have a little bit of time more together. And, I, and from when we go from the biohacking part, I definitely want to talk about the whole comprehensive uh, what's going on in the health world right now with censorship and everything. So, so let's start with your self-care your passion about biohacking, and then we'll take it in afterwards to to what's going on in the yeah, integration. It's just what it, it's always giving me the edge. Um, so I was like that odd kid, like when I was in middle school and high school. Like when my friends would play video games, I was in the gym. Like when they would go and eat fast food, like I was like measuring out my protein and and vegetables and 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 everything was organic. Always like when they were like listening to music, I was listening to personal development. So that's just all that I've ever known. Um, and I'm fanatical about gaining the edge and. It, not like in a competition sense to the world, like for myself, like that's, I'm completely self-motivated. Um, so that's just all that I've ever known. But like my rituals are what give me the energy that I have to do everything that I'm doing and to have mental clarity the entire time. So I'm at the gym every single day, seven days a week at five o'clock in the morning. As I'm working out, I'm doing personal development at the same time. I don't listen to music. I listen to whether it's audiobooks or, or certain podcasts, I, I'm fanatical about working my mind and my body at the same time. And then my nutrition is just damn tight. Like, I mean, everything, green drinks every day, all organic. Our family is that way. Like, they, I don't know when this is going to air, but we, Halloween was yesterday. And like, my daughter had so much fun just like getting candy, like in her bag. And then she's like, okay, I'm done. She literally put it in garbage herself. Like, that's just all she knows. Um, so yeah, that to me is what has allowed me to do what I'm doing. Like the discipline around health gives me the discipline as an entrepreneur, because obviously being an entrepreneur is not for the faint of heart. It is very stressful. I mean, it is not all sunshines and rainbows. It's actually mostly not sunshines and rainbows. Um, but when you have the right lifestyle in place, it allows you to really handle things that others can't. And, and it's, I believe it's because they're just not making the right lifestyle choices for themselves. So that's just what I focus on when it comes to my health. That's another big thing. Like even when I was working 20 hours a day, not getting a lot of sleep, which is not healthy, um, I still never missed the gym, never missed personal development and, and didn't compromise on my nutrition ever. Like that is what allowed me to get through those more difficult times. And now I can get more sleep, which is very important. And I, and I emphasize sleep for people because I think it's a cre like just a key to, to biohacking and just living a very healthy lifestyle. Um, but yeah, that's just what I do. And I'm, routine driven and, and very ritualistic. And I, I believe it's easier to do things hundred percent of the time than it is 95% of the time. So that's why I just go all in when it comes to health. So as a good for all, what are some of those podcasts that you're listening to? What are some of the books that you've read in these topics? I know you just write, you've been, you're very invested in the self-development. Um, what are just some things, just throw them off at the top of the head, just a list of things that people out there should be checking out and, and tapping into. Yeah, so like right now I'm on this really big Robin Sharma kick. Um, and I, I kind of always go back to him every now and then. I'm good friends with him. So um, I think that's just right now, that's like pretty much all I'm listening to. I went through every one of his podcasts and now his most recent books. Um, but I mean, it's, it's all of the personal development stuff out there. Like I'm really big with this. I want to challenge my mind to think differently. And then I also like, like business related things. I happen to think Gary Vaynerchuk's awesome because he is blending together a lot of headspace stuff now with like true entrepreneurship. He doesn't sugarcoat anything. So a lot of respect for how he delivers um, his message and what he delivers as well. Um, Tony Robbins podcast is amazing. Um, and then there's like other like random like audios that just get forwarded my way from, from people like you that are like doing this work and you're like, yo, dude, you have to listen to this. Um, and I spend that time every day in the gym hour, every day listening to those things. And I now have exposed my, my daughter to it as well because she's three and, and she gets these things and she's starting to talk this way, which is like really cool as well. It's awesome. There was a um, a meme that was going around the other day before Halloween, and it was a bunch of kids at a door with their hands open for the Halloween candy. And the words said, here's your um, your organic fair trade chocolate and some uh, roughage powder to help with your motility of your of your stomach. 
right? Uh, Instead of the junk food uh, and the candy. I'm like, that's going to be my family, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. And, and let's talk about non-GMOs. That's all that they know. And then right. she's funny. Like she'll walk around my daughter and I get school even as an example. Um, before she'll eat anything that they give her, she'll ask, is this organic? And they're like, what? <laughs> and she goes, is this organic? And they'll say yes, and she'll eat it. And if they sh- says no, then she goes, I don't want it. And like, we don't tell her to say that. It's just what she knows. Um, and she's very passionate about it. She walks through Whole Foods and she goes, is this organic or is organic? And she's very serious about it. I love it. I love it. This is this is one of the, the good things about these type of conversations is that for all of us out there that are into this stuff, we are not alone. We are not those weirdos on a little isolated place. There are people out there that want this information. They're sharing this information that are implementing it in to their family. Except one of the things that you and I just discussed, and I know this happened um, also for neuroemotional technique, is the documentary Stressed was on Amazon Prime for about a month and a half and two months and was getting crazy, crazy traction. And then all of a sudden it disappeared off their platform. And I'm sorry, on Amazon Prime, not Netflix. And, and it was gone. And we're like, what the heck is going on? And we're finding out that there's this little movement uh, behind the scenes of, of kind of whitewashing some integrative and natural health facts. So I know you and I were talking about this before, but, but I know if you want to share a little bit about what's going on from your perspective of your, your world working with all these health practitioners and some really, really well-known and really clinically researched and verified practitioners, what's going on from your perspective of what you're seeing? It's, it's insane. And, and if you are in the health space, um, and I'm sure many of you are, you have to step up. Like you can't just be on the sidelines because it's going to get even worse. But censorship is real. Um, Dr. Joseph Mercola, who I'm sure all of you are familiar with, Mercola.com, number one health website in the world, like head of WebMD, until recently, um, good friend of mine. And he is, I mean, really in the, in the midst of like this censorship epidemic, if you want to call it that. He had 20 million organic, unique views every month. That was like his standard. Um, and then out of nowhere, it dropped to a million organic, unique views. And he obviously impacted his business, but that's not what bothered him. What bothered him was the fact that now the truth, like his research around natural health and alternatives wasn't reaching people that needed the information. So he went on a mission to find out why. And he ended up having a conversation with a Google employee who was a whistleblower. And he shared the truth about how the pharmaceutical industry is funding Google. And as a result, this kind of content is being suppressed and hidden and the algorithms are no longer populating it when people are searching. And what that's doing is it's censoring the truth. It's censoring the truth around alternatives to what the pharmaceutical industry is offering people. And people are taking the information they find at, on Google very literally. So if, if Mercola's information or your information is not showing up, it's really, it's impacting both adults and children as well. So Joe and I are good friends and I said, Joe, we have a choice. We can either go down or we can get more strategic, not just louder, but more strategic. So I'm really excited. November 11th is the official unveiling of Mercola Marketing. I don't know when this podcast is going live, but we'll share information with you so you can include any links for people to learn more. But what this is going to become, um, this unveiling, is an opportunity for for Dr. Joseph Mercola to come out and and share what he's learned for the first time ever around censorship uh, for natural health content. The first time ever he's coming out and talking about this. Um, And not just talking about censorship, but offering a meaningful solution that involves you, like you as the health entrepreneur, mobilizing his research and your research on a local level by hosting community workshops, community webinars, and educating people in a way that the search engines can't stop you. Because they can't stop you from getting into your town and doing a workshop on the truth around a specific topic. And what he is allowing the world to do is actually use his research freely. Just use his research so that you can get out and share it. This is not like a business motivation for him. This is a philosophical motivation. This is the fact that he's invested 30 years of his life building the largest library of natural health content in the world, hundreds of thousands of of research-based articles. This isn't like his opinion. It's research-based articles, and he just wants the world to know the truth, and he's going to empower you as John or Jane Doe, health entrepreneur or health professional, to leverage what he spent his entire life building on a local level in your town so that you can become a health hero. So November 11th, the Monday, that's the official unveiling of Mercola Marketing, and it's also his first time coming out and talking about what's happened with censorship. So I'll share the information with you, Jason, so you can share it as well. 
Awesome. Yeah. And this is not a conspiracy theory, right? I didn't grow up in this world. Uh, for people who don't know a lot of my background, and I know you don't know a lot of my background, but I was like this standard, right? I would. I remember when I was living um, in New York, I, I lived in Israel for two years after high school. And then I came back and I was studying in New York. And I remember drinking like the, the big gallon jugs of Tropicana orange juice as a Florida boy living in New York and going through a jug one, you know, every two to three days of those big gallon jugs and not really knowing about my health and knowing that like from the time I was 18 when I was really lean and really thin and athletic to going to live for two years in Israel and then coming back and not really have, having more of a sedentary lifestyle, how much weight I gained as, as a, you know, and I'm not tall, I'm five foot two and how much it showed how quickly and how I had no connection and knowledge about health. Forget alternative health, forget uh, health, forget acupuncture, forget integrative nutrition. Like no one, functional medicine was like in 1998, 1999 was kind of a blip on the radar. So years later, as I learned about this, I started hearing all these things of like, no, 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 that must be a conspiracy theory against these people working in that world. And I don't, it's not. And, and my practice is clinically researched, journal published. Everything I'm doing is mainstream. And I'm hearing this left and right from people who I trust and I believe. So I want people out there to kind of start doing their investigations about this, about this world. And, and it's going to affect people from functional medicine, integrative nutrition. There's a doctor um, who I had a client from three years ago who they were treating the client's MS. Uh, and this doctor, this MD was treating it as a gut-based disease. And there, we know the connection between gut and brain inflammation. And instead of just treating it as a brain-based disease, treating it as gut-based disease, within 90 days, 90% of the symptoms of that person went away with functional food, functional medicine, nutrition. Yeah, it surprised me, of course. Yeah. Right? So like, you what made the body heals the body, right? And, and like, there's definitely a place for, for again, crisis for, for medicine. I mean, mm -hmm. in, in crisis, but the key is this, it's about people having options. So like censoring out just in a different, I mean, research based, um, opportunity isn't fair to the person who wants to make a decision. Like when you only give them one option and you're suppressing the other option, that's the issue. This isn't a debate on what's right or what's wrong. Like the person can make their own decision when they have access to all the information. The problem is they don't have access to all the information anymore. And I'm just very passionate across every industry about mobilizing the truth. I mean, that's what I stand for. That's what we built our platform to do. Mobilize the truth. Because in every industry, this exists, right? There's censorship in finance. Like, mm -hmm. there's censorship in the veterinary world. There's censorship in religion. I mean, there's censorship everywhere. And I just stand to give people the information for them to make decisions. And we built a platform that just makes it easier. So if you're in health, like it's so important. I can't emphasize this enough. Like in health, you can't be the best kept secret in your town. Like you can't be. And if you have a remote business, I can guarantee there are people that are sick, suffering, and dying in your town. So I mean, go remote. Have like one client in another country, but like in your town, become the local health hero. Because if you don't, the people in your community only have one option. And I'm not saying that option isn't what's best for them. It might be what's best for them in that unique situation, but they at least need to know there's other options. Absolutely. And it's so critical that you're not a change talker that's just talking with your colleagues, but you're a change maker that's talking with the rest of the world. So I'll, Jason, I'll share all the information with you. Like we're, this is a mission. Like this is a mission to have tens of thousands of health entrepreneurs and, and, and even non-health entrepreneurs like come to this experience on November 11th. It's a live webinar we're doing um, with an open Q&A at the end. I think it's gonna be very intense. Um, and then we'll have the recording available for everybody as well. Um, but it's really, I mean, this is pressing mm. information, real time. Joe literally just interviewed this whistleblower, I think last week, and it's not even coming out until after our webinar. Like, this is the first time that he's talking about this. And I just can't wait to ask him hard questions, Dr. Magola, so that he can then answer them for the audience and then not just answer them, but offer a real solution. That if you want to be part of the solution, which means mobilizing the truth on a local level, town by town, becoming your local health hero, Joe wants to help you do that and I'm going to support it as well. Yeah, and I equate this to like a civil rights movement when it comes to oh, yeah. what is your <laughs> rights for your own determination to live the healthiest way 
possible as you see fit and as an integrative medicine practice, not just a psychology or therapy practice, right? I find this so passionate and I have these conversations with my clients. But if you're listening to this podcast, whether it's before or after that time and you are in sync with what he's saying, please, please, please check out everything that you were talking about and the links will be in the show notes and on our social media. And the last, so to tie it all together, to tie all this awesome stuff together is the question I, I like calling my on one foot question. So if we can take all of your wisdom and you happen to meet somebody on the street and you knew you would never see them again and you had two minutes to kind of impact them, what would you be saying? That's a really awesome question. Um, so know what I would say is never compromise on having it all. And I really... It's like my war cry to the world. And I think part of it is, and I shared this with you, like I come from this divorced home um, at a very young age. And if somebody were to ask me, what's one word to define your childhood? I would have said loud, like that was it. And I have two amazing parents that were horrific together, but they're amazing as individual people, just really not amazing as a married couple. Um, But that was it. My childhood was loud. There was nowhere for me to go for peace, serenity, I mean, nowhere. I mean, it was just chaos, financial chaos. It was literally loud. Like there was arguing. We were moving. Like we had dogs. We get rid of the dogs. I mean, like just like it was like the worst nightmare for a six-year-old and and a sister that was four. Like it was just chaos. Like visitation issues. And one of the things that I came away with from this is divorce was my gift because for me, what it helped me recognize is that I will never compromise my definition of having it all. And having it all for me is the family the health, and the freedom that entrepreneurship creates. I will never compromise that, ever. So in two minutes, if I had a chance to talk to somebody, that's what I would tell them, is never compromise having it all. Define what having it all means to you, and then never compromise. Never negotiate against yourself. Don't tell stories as to why you can't have it all. Just create a life where you can have it all. That's the positive chip on the shoulder, right? We can, we can take a negative experience. I'm also uh, a child of, of my parents getting divorced. And I joke that, thank God they got divorced because I would have killed them both if they didn't. And it was chaos. It was tumultuous. It, it, it pulled me away from being anywhere focused on anything that I could be capable of doing. And thank God I had some really good mentors and some uh, good youth directors and, and a great youth group and a great synagogue and a great community uh, to help me with so many things that I was just awful at it, 16 to 20 something years old. But we can make that, and I really want people to hear what you just said of like using that as a transformative story to motivate you and to keep it as a, you know, I talked to um, Cody Askins about this and, and using something not as a negative chip on your shoulder, but as a positive chip on your shoulder, as a positive motivation of something that we could define as negative, but to inspire us. And Esther Hicks talks about this in the law of attraction world, right? You have to go through something and define it as something you want versus something you don't want in order to now ask for what you want. But when my couples come in or my clients come in, I said, I always ask them this, tell me what you would like to achieve without telling me what you don't want. So if it's a couple, they're like, well, we don't want to fight anymore. I'm like, no, no, don't tell me that. What would you want instead? Okay, well, we want to fight less. No, no, no. What do you want instead? Oh, we really want to have amazing communication. Okay, fine. But you have to know what you don't want, what you've been through, what feels like crap to you. But I want to challenge people out there, like you just said, like to have this really amazing life by asking for specifically what you guys do want. So for you, right, your health, your family, simplicity in your business, not for those things to affect each other in a negative way and to have it all. So I want really people to, if we tie this all together, for people to walk away with it being incredibly crystal clear with asking for what you want to make it a bold mission statement like you have in your 1 million entrepreneurs affecting 1 billion, right? Change-making entrepreneurs affecting 1 billion people around the world. And I want people to, to come up with that. And I want people to hit us up on social media, right? They can hit you I up on you social media. I realize when you just said the most important thing in this whole, whole hour session together, like everything in life is a blessing, right? This is the exact conversation I had with, with Dr. Joseph Mercola when he was talking about this challenge that he faces. I said, Joe, this is a blessing, a blessing. The fact that you now went from 30 million organic views to 20 million organic views to a million is a blessing. Do you know why? And he's like, why? I said, because now you can actually do what you're meant to do in this world, which is to mobilize and create a local health hero in every 
single community. Up to this point, it was all about Joe as the hero. And now Joe can't be the hero because Google is not allowing Joe to be. Like he, it's just, it, it'll never, it'll only get worse. It's never gonna get better. So it's only gonna get worse. That million will go down to 100,000 and like, and then Joe is not the hero anymore. He doesn't have an ego, he doesn't care about being the hero. But now you can be, mm -hmm. right? What a blessing. And that is sustainable. Because like at some point in time, Joe's a very healthy man, but like he won't be here anymore. So what's the legacy? The legacy is him passing the baton, not to just one person to like run Mercola, but to millions yeah. of health heroes on a local level. Everything is a blessing. My parents' divorce was the greatest blessing for me. Everything is. And it should, it's not even like trying to convince yourself. Like in the moment, oh, let's try to find the good in this. It is a blessing. It is a blessing that you can use as a foundation to build on the next level of your life from. And I want to make sure for you to say it, like that is the key to all of this. Everything is a blessing. What I want to add to that is like when my clients come in, they're like, well, you're going to, you're going to fix this for me, right? I'm like, no, I'm not fixing anything. I'm, my job is to push your buttons, ask you really ridiculous questions in ways that you never thought about it and get you out of your way of thinking about the way you've always been thinking something so you can choose to solve it in a way that's again, right in alignment with your core values and challenges your belief around those things. Because if you were to just think about it differently, the problem would either A, disappear, or you would have a different way of solving the problem. And that's my job. So it's not about me, the thing therapist, the coach to figure it out for you. It's about me inspiring and empowering you to know that all those truths already lie in you and to mobilize you so you can take it back out. And one of my favorite questions to ask my clients is what would need to happen in order for you to know you're ready to fire me and only come back in for an oil change a couple times a year? And I think that's kind of what Dr. Mercola is doing, I think, right? Is, is, is going out there and, and decentralizing this one... Yeah right? Only one place for one education, one, one, one set of knowledge and saying, you too can do this. You too can be empowered. You too can be the change maker. And I think that's really the key word for this whole conversation is not someone who has a mission or, or, or a goal, but it's being the change maker and putting their foot on the ground, putting their, right, and opening their mouth. And not lighting something. other people's fire so they can then go out and light the fire for thousands. And it's, and it's this ripple effect. And this is not theoretical. I mean, this yeah. is how like movements are formed. Like this happened. There's like countless studies and, and experiences in life where like this was reality. It's the yeah. blessing. It's the blessing of the challenge. Yeah. And every one of you have that. So, uh, Jason, man, this has been Thank you. more than rich for me personally. Um, you rock, bro. I mean, you are gotcha. the absolute real deal. You're doing exactly what you're meant to be doing in this world. Um, and I'm, I'm just honored to be here to serve you, to serve your growing community. Um, what we always say at Sinuit is this, together we achieve more. We stand behind that. And I can tell, bro, that that's what you stand behind too as well. Thank you so much. So I'll leave us with a quote for everybody out there. And, and I've heard it from two different people. One, I've, uh, I've heard it for years from the Lubavitcher Rebbe of uh, the Chabad Hasidic movement. And I recently saw it actually quoted as the Buddha. And the quote goes as followed, it's a little light will dispel a lot of darkness. So if you take that one candle and that one candle, like you just said, you can take it and light another candle because that one little candle can light a billion other candles. So I want to challenge everybody out there who's connected uh, with this podcast, with connect with the Sindua community that hopefully this is going to go out to, that really make sure your candle has enough wax. You have the right sparks in your life to get your candle lit so you can start sharing it, your mission, your purpose, and your passion with everybody else out there. So Jared, looking forward to hearing more from you. They can check you out at sinduit.com is the website. Uh, where can they, can they connect with you on social media anywhere? Yeah. I mean, you can search for me personally, Jared Yellen or, or Sinduit. We're active everywhere. So yeah. So everything is under my name and also Sinduit as well. So just search for us, like us, follow us. Um, just become part of our, our movement, whether you're using our software or not is just irrelevant. What I mean by movement is that you're out there as a change maker entrepreneur and you're just lighting the fire of others so they can then go out and light the fire for others. And collectively we create freedom for 1 billion people. Awesome. 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 All right. Y'all. So check us out. Please download, subscribe to You Winning Life podcast. Please share this. This is a really, really powerful episode. Please share this with everybody. You know that will be in alignment with what we were just talking about. And we look forward to seeing you at the next episode. Thanks for listening to the You Winning Life podcast. If you are ready to minimize your personal and professional struggles and maximize your potential, we would love it if you subscribe so you don't miss an episode. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Jason Wasser, LMFT.